Amen. Ego flight. Greater height. height. Do we have any egos in the house? <laughs> egos fly in <laughs> of a storm. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Egos are not afraid of circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. While Amen. other birds are running away, looking for somewhere to hide, the eagles are enjoying themselves Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I see you breaking forth on every side in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. I say, I see you breaking forth on every side in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a God we have. Amen. Did you hear those testimonies? Mm. Isn't our God mm. mighty? Amen. Why don't we yes. dance for Jesus again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the living God. Amen. He is alive. Um, we are so grateful for all of you attending. May the Lord continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to lift you Amen. in the name of Jesus. As we, Amen. after this preaching, we are going to uh, be taking communion together because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. I don't know. I have gone through the Bible from cover to cover several times. I have not yet seen another verse that says, do this in remembrance of me. Obviously, Jesus wants us to pray. Jesus wants us to fast. Jesus wants us to do a lot of things. But in remembrance of him, he said, do this, take communion in remembrance of me. Amen. So it will be very important. Don't worry yourself. You can have raspberry. You can have water. You can have any other drink. And then for the body of Christ, you can have a bread, just a small piece of bread. It can be a piece of, uh, I don't know what it is, you know, biscuit or something like that. Then we will enjoy the communion together in the name of Jesus. Shall we? Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask for your grace that as I speak to your people tonight, transform us, change us in the name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. What a word we had from Apostle Phyllis that it is by the blood of Jesus Christ that That's right. we gathered here and our prayers are answered by Jehovah. We are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Do you, would you like us to sing a song together? The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus shall never lose it, shall never lose its power. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus shall never lose it, shall never lose its power. Shall never, never lose his power. Shall never lose his power. Shall never lose it. Shall never lose his power. The blood of Jesus will never lose his power. Praise the name of Jesus. So we are looking at how to become a world changer. Is there anybody? Midst who wants to become a world changer? Hallelujah. You want to become a world changer. You want to be like our master Jesus. Jesus was a world changer. Today is a Friday. We call it Good Friday. I know some people out of ignorance, they are gathered in their churches and they are crying. Oh, they crucified him. But we are not crying. We are celebrating because Jesus was crucified on a day like today. By his crucifixion, we were saved. By his yeah. crucifixion, we were delivered. By his crucifixion, we are healed. How sweet is that? The peace of Jehovah is upon our lives. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross. Praise the name yeah. of Jesus. Our Lord is the greatest of all heroes. You know, when I was in college, I was in a, in a teacher's college. My understanding of Jesus changed. Because when we were doing psychology of education as a, as a module, we actually had some textbooks on psychology, which is the study of the mind. 
We, and some of those books were actually mentioning Jesus as one of the greatest psychologists that walked on earth. Not just hearing it from the Bible, but you know, it's nice to read a textbook telling you that among the psychologists that ever lived, Jesus Christ was one of them. And we were also doing philosophy of education. So we were looking at wisdom. Among some of the greatest philosophers like Socrates and so on, Jesus Christ was mentioned as one of the greatest philosophers. And then when it came to sociology of education, we also had some books that mentioned Jesus as one of the greatest people who were good as sociologists or at socializing with people. He was a smart person. It encouraged my faith. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. There is a song I feel like singing today. Hallelujah. There is a song which says, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Oh yes, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Oh yes, I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like him how many of us want to be like jesus i want Amen. a world changer like jesus of nazareth how do you become a world changer i have 12 steps that i'm going to share with you number one pursue your purpose help me tell somebody near you pursue your purpose pursue your purpose, pursue your purpose. if you have no name if you have no neighbor right now just tell yourself pursue your Assume your purpose. <laughs> Glory your purpose. to God. So the number one step for you to become a world changer is, first of all, to know why you were born. Why are you here? The reason why people commit suicide, the reason why people give up too early, the reason why people just live life Patching, patching from one day to another is because they have not yet realized their purpose. When you understand your reason for being on earth, my friends, <laughs> life gets exciting. In the midst of turmoil, you will still be smiling and excited and pushing to do what you were born to do. I want to say to us, many Christians have gotten it wrong. They think by just being holy, it's enough. They think by being ready for heaven, it's enough. Friends, can I tell you something? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. What does it tell us? It tells us that we are supposed to dominate the earth. What does that mean? You are supposed to rule. You are supposed to take charge of the earth. Praise the name of Jesus. Another thing that God said to Adam and Eve is multiply, be productive on earth. <clears throat> Just talking about having children, be productive, manage the earth, use the resources of the earth, take care of them. So God expects you and me to dominate the earth, that's number one. Number two, to multiply. And number three, to replenish the earth. To make the Amen. useful again. To make the earth valuable again. Now, in Genesis 1 verse 26 and Genesis 1, 1 verse 28, did you ever hear God saying, get ready for heaven? Hello? So if you are, here, you are thinking, oh, I'm just trying life, you know. I'm just waiting for my Jesus to come and take me. God did not say your purpose is to go to heaven. <laughs> Am I speaking to someone? God did not say your purpose is to go to heaven. My purpose and your purpose is to dominate the earth, to multiply, be productive, and to replenish the earth. Hallelujah. And to replenish the earth. Glory to the living God. Amen. I, 
So stop thinking every day, every morning, every evening, every afternoon. Oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go. You were not born to go to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not keep what you were sent to do. You must pursue your purpose. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to heaven. Eventually, we'll go to heaven. In any case, the book of Revelation says, I saw new Jerusalem coming down. <laughs> so if you are, don't get excited about going to heaven. Don't just get excited about being holy only. Being holy only is not dominating. Being holy only is not multiplication. Being holy only is not replenishing the earth. We have to do what we were sent to do here. By the time you are done on earth, you must be fulfilled that I have done what I was born to do. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. So number one, to become a world changer, number one is pursue your purpose. What is your purpose? Number two, see the end from the beginning. Every world changer sees what others do not see. Whether you are a world changer in industry or you are a world changer in the spiritual world, you are a world changer in your, I don't know, in your academics, whatever it is, you need to see the end from the beginning. It is only people who see the end before they get there who are able to do great things. Did you hear what, say, what Martin Luther King said? He said, I have a dream. <laughs> he, saw, he said, I saw a vision. I have gone to the future. I have seen blacks and whites eating together. I have seen all races enjoying sitting on the bus together. He saw something and he was ready to die for it. Are you? Amen. Do you know why Jesus conquered the devil? Do you know why Jesus hung on the cross even when it was hard? It's because Jesus, while he was being beaten, he saw you and me being saved. Amen. He saw you and me being healed. He saw the church sparkling clean. So when they were beating him, and when they were putting him on the cross, he did the cross. He saw you and me. Hallelujah. What mm -hmm. thing? Friends, if you are going to listen to what people are saying around you, if you are going to be following the news every minute, every second, if you are going to look for friends that talk negative stuff, you cannot achieve much. You can't be a world changer. World changers are people who see the end from the beginning. Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter Amen. 11 and 12, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Did you know that God wants to know what you are seeing? Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Verse 12, then say the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So you want God to quicken the word that he has spoken in your life? What are you seeing? Is what you are seeing the same thing as what God is seeing? If not, forget it. Praise the name of Jesus. World changers Pursue their purpose, number one. World changers see the end from the beginning. So you are in 2020. We are in COVID-19. People are crying about COVID-19. But the world changers are already seeing the world recovered. World changers are already seeing new strategies that they are going to use in their business. World changers are already seeing 10, 20, 30, 50 years ahead of time. Glory to the living God. Now, how to become a world changer. Number three, carry your cross. Carry your what? 
your cross. cross. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 26. Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Woo. You think carrying the cross was the easiest thing? Hello? No. Everybody must have a cross. In other words, there is a price to pay for greatness. Greatness cannot be wished. Greatness is not something that you just dream about. You have to pay the price. You want to be a great Christian, you must pray. Many hours, you must fast. You must study the word every day. You must preach Christ to others. In your workplace, you must be the best because you have the mind of Christ. In your industry, you must be unique. That's how you become <laughs> a world changer. Praise the name of Jesus. Carry your cross. No cross, no crown. Glory to God. No cross, no crown. Hallelujah. That's our number three. Number four, endure times when God is silent. Has it ever happened to you that God seemed to be silent? Hello? The way your faces are looking, I think uh, it has never happened to you. God is always talking. <laughs> yes. There are times when the master seems to be quiet. There are times when you ask yourself, God, where are you? There are times when you are wondering. It happened even to the disciples when they were in the storm. Jesus was sleeping. Master, you are sleeping. We are perishing in the storm. He wakes up. He says, peace be still. <laughs> he didn't ask them, where is the storm coming from? When did it start? He was not concerned about the news. He just said, peace be still. Yes. Why is it that sometimes God seems to be silent on this journey? Now, let me ask you something. All of us have gone to school, right? Your teacher or your lecturer will be with you supporting you, isn't it? You go to class, do homework, and all those things. During examination time, does your teacher talk? Hello? No. No. During exam time, does your lecturer talk? No. It's no. exam time. They may not even be the invigilator. They will be away waiting to mark. So there are times like that in life in the life of a world changer sometimes it seems as though god is quiet when it sounds like god is silent be careful what you speak hallelujah be careful what you speak you need to act on what god has mentored you to do all along praise the name of jesus hallelujah are you still there amen, yeah. amen. hallelujah so endure, that's our number four, endure times when God seems to be silent. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Matthew 27 and verse number 46. It says, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthan. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you left me alone? Why have you deserted me? Jesus at that juncture was carrying the sin of the world. Jesus was carrying the sin of the world. He felt pain. As much as he was the son of God, he was human like you and me. He felt pain like you and me. He cried out. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. So, when you feel like God is silent, you must endure through those times. Just know it's examination time. He is with you. Glory to the living God. Do you remember in the book of Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, he spoke the word. 
He answered. He answered. It is written. It is written. It is written. What happened? The devil left him for a period, not forever. The tempter left him. As soon as the devil went away, what happened? Angels ministered to Jesus. Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. Angels ministered to Jesus. Angels ministered to Jesus. So, don't talk carelessly during a crisis. The moment you hear yourself beginning to question, the moment you begin to hear yourself saying, where is God? Just know that you are about to join forces with the devil. Because you are now doubting. You are not using faith anymore. Glory to the living God. During moments of silence, it's an examination time. Your teacher, the Holy Spirit, is there. He's waiting for you to conquer. Glory to the living God. Number five, you don't become a general in the army due to qualifications, but through wounds. Hello. <laughs> Number five, in becoming a world changer, you don't become a world changer by your qualifications. Yes, it's good to have qualifications, obviously. It's good for you to be well known. That's very good. But there are some wounds. There are some scars. Have you ever seen a champion without scars? I'm yet to see one. There is no champion without scars. Second Timothy chapter two, verse three to four. Second Timothy chapter two, verse. Uh, Second Timothy chapter two, verse three to four. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier. Of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Do I have soldiers in the house? If you are a soldier, <laughs> you must learn to endure hardship. You must learn to endure hardship. It's part of becoming a world changer. Jesus endured danger. Jesus endured hardship. Jesus was a king. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus had the Holy Spirit without measure. Hey, he went through hardship. That's why, uh, have you ever seen a scripture where Jesus said, I paid for your pain. I paid for your, I mean, your persecutions. You remember what Jesus said to his disciples? They have persecuted me, your master. What about you? Hallelujah. Jesus said, you are going to have hardships, but take a heart. I have conquered the world. So if you are going to be a world changer, you must be willing to endure hardships as a soldier. How many of us would like to be enlisted as soldiers right now? Like, like in your country right now, would you like to become a soldier? Do you qualify to join the army? What would disqualify you? Some, it's age. I don't think some of us will be taken for, to the army now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They want young people, energetic. Uh, young people who can run, who can carry heavy bags, who can endure hardship. So physically, we are disqualified, many of us, to become soldiers. Some, even the young ones, they disqualify themselves. They don't want that. Thank God for spiritual warfare. In spiritual warfare, there's no age. You and I qualify. But we must endure hardship. We must endure hardship. Read the stories of any world changer. There is none of them who did not endure hardships. Glory to the living God. Number six in becoming a world changer. Don't worry about people. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Let me repeat it. Do not worry about people. People 
will glorify you later after you have conquered. But while you are going through challenges, ah, uh, why? <laughs> some of them will laugh at you. Some of them will mock you. Some of them will tell you you are a nothing. Some of you were told by your teachers when you were in primary school that you are going to amount to zero. For some of you, it actually worked because you said, what? They said I will amount to zero. I will show them. Then you started working very hard. Thank God. <laughs> For some of you, it was your parents. Unknowingly, your parents said to you, you are rubbish. I wish you were like this child and this child and this child. You, you will come to zero. Glory to God. Those are people. Sometimes even the people we love can try to harm us. Let's not worry about them. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We must look unto him because human beings will err. Human beings will make mistakes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When Jesus was being crucified, the army boss, he said, in fact, after, after Jesus had died, he said, oh, he was a true man of God. He was a true son of God. After, during the process of him being crucified, this army boss was quiet. Or probably he was one of those who were saying, yeah, you saved others. Now save yourself. <laughs> That's human beings for you. Praise the name of Jesus. Remember, when you have a purpose and you are disciplined enough to follow your purpose, nothing can stop you in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to the living God. Don't worry about people. Follow your God. Follow your purpose. You are like an athlete. You are like an athlete. You must not be looking at what other people are doing in their tracks. Have you seen what the body of Christ has done lately? People are busy fighting among themselves. Who is the true man of God? Who is not the true man of God? Who is a true prophet? Who is not a true prophet? Who is not a true woman of God? Hey, hey you have joined the devil by so doing. Focus on your lane. This is a relay. You are running in the track. You have your area. Who made you a commentator? Who made you a judge? Who made you a referee? Praise the name of Jesus. May the Lord grant us grace. Don't worry about people. If you are going to be a world changer, keep pushing, regardless of what people are saying. Number seven, disregard your suffering and see the glorious future. Disregard your suffering and see the glorious future. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But you be sober in all things. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Are you with me? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 says, But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed and do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. We have some people that are losing hope right now. They hear so many conspiracy theories. Some people are saying COVID-19 is the end of the world. Some people are saying eh, right now we are going to be put 666. Everyone is going to be forced into 666 right now. Some people are saying, listen to me. Worship God, run your course. As long as you are still breathing, preach the gospel. As long as you are still breathing, do what you are supposed to do. Yes, it's okay to hear the news. It's okay to hear our free analysts. We have so many free analysts all over. And everybody is an expert to a certain extent. Have you seen how everybody has been interpreting COVID-19? Now, do you know which, which conspiracy theory is correct or not? Is that your business? Glory to God. Is that your business? You are supposed to focus on your work. You are supposed to focus on what you... 
Ask yourself, if Jesus was here, would he be doing what I'm doing right now? If Jesus was here, would he be saying what I'm saying? If Jesus was here during COVID-19, will he spend the time doing what I'm doing? Discussing what I'm discussing? Or Jesus will be busy studying the way, spending time with Jehovah, you know, getting ready to do greater things. Like right now, online, we can, it's very easy to invite people and we gather and we share the word and burn all the works of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. We are completely unstoppable. We are not going to allow the devil to stop us. Stop crying. Hallelujah. Number eight, endure being despised, rejected, and mocked. You want to become a world changer? You must understand that this being despised, being rejected, and being mocked is part of the game. Even Jesus was rejected. Jesus was actually rejected where he was born, in his place. <laughs> if they rejected Jesus, what about you and me? Hallelujah. And Jesus understood this. He told his disciples, when you go door to door preaching, if people receive you, get in and give them peace. If they refuse you, leave them. Throw the dust from your feet to them. He was trying to say, you shall be rejected. And when you are rejected, keep moving. Hello? When you are rejected, keep what? Keep moving. You don't stop. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Matthew 27, verse 41 to 42. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, he saved others himself. He cannot save himself. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He was being mocked, but he kept quiet. He knew what he was doing. The enemies thought Jesus was now out. They didn't know that he is actually conquering one step at a time. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 5. We despise him and rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he were nothing. You can finish those verses. Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 5. Number nine, run away from sin, money, sexual immorality and pride run away from sin the love of money sexual immorality and pride you want to be a world changer it's easy to reduce yourself to a morsel of bread hallelujah it's easy to reduce yourself to a morsel of bread because you are living a life of sin may the lord grant us grace first corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 Flee fornication. Every sin. Hallelujah. Sorry for that. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4 says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We have already talked about that one. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Hallelujah. Sinners will not enter the kingdom of God. Sinners will not be able to conquer the world. Verse 10 says, Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And of course, Revelation 20, 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the warmongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Glory to God. You want to conquer the world? Live a clean life. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. Hallelujah. Number 10, endure false accusations. Do we have people who have ever been accused falsely? 
that you did something that you didn't do. It's part of the game. It happened to Jesus. It will happen to all of us. Amen and amen. It happened to our master. It will definitely happen to all of us. I remember when I was a, a young man. Actually, I was a student teacher. I had started a scripture union at the school where I was uh, uh, teaching. I was an excited young man doing the work of God. Started scripture union. And the assembly of the church was running powerfully. Guess what? One time we went for a crusade in a village. Right? As we went for that crusade, I remember this particular sister. She was the chairperson of the Christian Union at the school where I was teaching. She, she was from that village. So she came to us at the place where we were doing the crusade. She said, can you please visit my house also, our house with my parents? I thank God that I refused. I said, you know what? We came specifically for the crusade. We won't be able to come to your home. I didn't know that she had been sent by the devil. So we did the crusade, I think it was three days. When we were done with the crusade, we came back to the township where we were staying. Ah, a day later, I hear everybody saying, ah, this brother I'm talking, he's a fake. He had actually gone to, to marry a, 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 a kid, a school child. Ah, I said, marriage, me. <laughs> that same sister who was the chair lady of the CU, who had tried to invite us to her house and we refused to go. She started going around saying, I'm in love with brother Wilbert Mutoko. Actually, this thing they are saying they were at a crusade is a lie. They had actually come to my mother's home. They were actually paying Lobola. Ah! I'm telling you, people can accuse you of things that you have never thought of. Do you know until today, I never spoke to that girl. I never told her I knew what she was spreading around. I ignored her. Sometimes you kill your enemies by keeping quiet. I know some of them need to be told, but sometimes you kill them by keeping quiet. I think you have been accused several times. Jesus was accused. Keep moving. World changers will keep moving, even when you are falsely accused. They accused Jesus. Glory to the living God. Matthew 26, verse 60 to 61. But found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Now, did Jesus say that he would um, destroy the temple and build it in three days? Yes. But is that what he meant? These false witnesses, they were just accusing him. You will have false witnesses. Keep moving. Some of the false witnesses will come from the church or from the body of Christ. Keep moving. Some of them will come from your close family. Keep moving. World changers are unstoppable in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number 11, as we come to the end, you must finish your work. You must finish what God gave you to do. Have you finished exploring those gifts? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's Paul speaking. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Paul knew that he was done. Are you done? What did God send you to do? What gifts did he put in you? What talents did God put in you? Hallelujah. Are you using them? Glory to the living God. You must finish what you started. Don't be stopped by challenges. Jesus was not stopped by challenges. If Jesus had been stopped by challenges, you and I would not be seated here today. Number 12, finally. Remember, to whom much is given, much shall be demanded. <laughs> you know what guys I am preaching Jesus in the morning, in the afternoon in the evening, every time I record videos I send texts, I put WhatsApp status one other thing that I believe God sent me to do is to empower people financially so I help business people, I text her even today, I interviewed somebody, one hour 30 minutes 
interviewing a, a successful millionaire so that we can help the tips and let others learn. Tomorrow, I'll be interviewing another multimillionaire so that people can learn. That's what I believe I was called to do. Using my own money. Using my time. And some people can't understand. Why do you record these things? Why do you spend time doing these things? To whom much has been given, much shall be demanded. Hallelujah. Stop comparing yourself. Some of the people you are comparing yourself with, they are almost done with what God sent them to do. Hello? Some were given five talents. Another one was given four talents. Another one was given one. The master saw this one for, the one who was given one talent was seen that mm, this talent is at risk. And for sure, he buried it in the soil. So don't try to copy others. Maybe you saw someone who brought five people to Christ in their lifetime. And you are saying, <laughs> me, I brought ten, so I'm better. Who told you? Maybe this one who brought five, God actually expected them to bring four according to their capacity. So by bringing five, they have, they have actually gone beyond. But as for you, maybe God expects 5,000 souls from you. Hello? There are people who are dying, going to hell without knowing Jesus. And here we are, in our comfort zones. There are people who are sick that you should have prayed for. And you are waiting for somebody somewhere to do it. And God is expecting you to, to whom much has been given, much shall be demanded. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Hallelujah. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say you are blessed Amen. in the name of Jesus. So we said 12 steps to become a world changer. Number one, pursue your purpose. Number two, see the end from the beginning. Number three, carry your cross. Number four, endure times when God is silent. Number five, you don't become a general without scars. Number six, don't worry about people. They are people. Seven, disregard your suffering. Number eight, endure being despised, rejected, and mocked. It's part of the game. Number nine, run away from sin. Number 10, endure false accusations. Number 11, you must finish your work. And of course, number 12, remember to whom much is given, much shall be demanded. I would like to ask you right now to go before the Lord and begin to ask for mercy. Tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me where I have not done well. Wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. Let's go ahead. My Lord and my God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I have heard your word. I ask you to cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for every sin I've committed. Forgive me, Lord, for the sin of commission. Forgive me, Jehovah, for the sin of omission. Forgive me, Lord, for not winning enough souls. Forgive me, Lord, for not doing enough impact in my career, in my industry, in my academics, in my giftings, in my talents, in winning souls, in everything, Lord. Forgive me, Jehovah. Grant me grace from tonight to become a world changer in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant me grace to carry my cross to soldier on, almighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Excellent God. To the living God, I don't know whether you can. Um, let's raise whatever it is that we have. With me in this plate, I have the body of Christ. It's some small pieces of bread. Hallelujah. And then he Amen. has raspberry drink, which I'm calling the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is by faith. Glory to God. Now I want to pray. Father, as we raise the bread of Jesus before you, my Lord, this bread that we have in our plates, in our hands, we call it the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Lord, by faith, as we partake this body of Jesus, we receive our healing. We receive our transformation. 
we receive our strength. We receive supernatural insights in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, we call this drink that we are holding, we call it the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. Lord, as we drink this blood of Jesus, our lives will never be the same again. Father, let there be a blood transfusion. As we take this blood of Jesus, let our blood be re removed and it be replaced by the blood of Jesus. Let every sickness be washed away. Let every impurity of darkness be removed from our system. Let every power of darkness be broken of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my Lord, you say in your word, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as we do this, even as it says in the book of John, chapter 6 from verse 46 going forward, that as we partake of this communion, Lord, we will have long life. We partake of the long life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we partake of the healing. We partake of the deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father, because it's ready. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Please um, feel free to partake of the bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Partake of it. Hallelujah. There is power, there is power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, there is power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, there is power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. I want you to speak prophetically to your life. I know I've prayed for you. I want you to pray for yourself. Begin to declare, as you have partaken of this communion, what are you desiring from the Lord? Go ahead, begin to declare. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I have partaken this communion, my life will never be the same. Your word says, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, my eyes are open to see what you want me to do for you to see the great work that I have supposed to do, Almighty God, in terms of ministry, in terms of industry expansion, in terms of bringing solutions to people, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my blood has been replaced by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm completely made whole in every aspect. I'm made whole spiritually. I'm made whole in my soul. I'm made whole in my body, in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive new strength. I receive new strength. I receive new strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. The Lord bless you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to know that I love you. Amen. I want you to know that we love you. Amen. That we are praying for you. Amen. And I know you are praying for us. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to bring more people. Let this be a movement that will break the neck of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as you serve God, may the Lord continue to bless you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Reduce your intake of negative news. Reduce being surrounded by negative people. Surround yourself with the words. Touch lives. Donate out there. Help others. Encourage people on social media. Preach the gospel, the, the gospel in season and out of season. You are blessed. I say you are blessed. Amen. I say you are blessed Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tonight is your night Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord open your eyes Amen. to see opportunities that you were not seeing. Amen. May the Lord grant you new strength Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Peace. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.